Hi there, Sugar Snaps. Welcome back to my studio. If you're new here, welcome in. My name's Brittany. I'm the maker behind Textile Indie, the YouTube channel and the website. Today is the second part in a three-part experiment on incorporating random materials into my paper making. So you can watch this video where I experimented with incorporating fabric bits into paper. Today we'll be going over incorporating bits of string. And in a couple days, I'll be putting out a video on how to use wrapping paper and tissue paper, of course, used recycled wrapping paper and tissue paper into your paper making. So let's get started with gathering the tools and materials and get going with this experiment. For a full list of materials, check the description below. To get started, you'll need a blender, a bin for the slurry, and some bits of string and scrap paper. Your first step is going to be tearing up the bits of your scrap paper into small pieces. I like to do about one inch pieces. Fill up your blender with some water and then put scraps of paper in. I usually allow it to sit for about a minute to soak, but then blend it up. I go from a low setting up to a high speed setting and continue to do that with all of your slurry. Paper making with thread. I have my paper slurry ready to go. If you want more about how to prep your paper slurry, you can watch the first video in this series that's up in the little eye up here and in the description below under making paper with fabric. Okay, so I have a little bundle of sewing thread scraps. I collected this from a sewing project I did recently. You can see that video up here. This is quite a small pile but we're going to use this to experiment with. And if it goes well, I'll start collecting my threads more often. So I have my bin of slurry. I'm gonna add some liquid starch because I haven't done that yet. I did, if I remember right, four blenders of slurry for this batch. So I'm going to add four tablespoons of liquid starch. Okay, mix, mix, mix. I think there are two ways that I can incorporate this into my hand dipped paper. One being to sprinkle it onto the surface of my slurry and then dip from there with the thread in it. Or I could dip the paper and then put the thread on top like I did with the fabric pieces in the paper with fabric video and pour slurry over top of it to kind of embed it. I think I'm going to do that because I'll have more ability to control where the thread ends up and how it spreads out so it's not one big clump. I can kind of spread it out over the surface. So I'm going to take my screen, set this guy up. Check the description below for a list of all the tools and materials I'm using and resources so you can find those on your own. I have this set up, the grating, the screen mesh, and the frame with this really tight mesh in the description below. This is a great starter set for paper making. If you click on some of those links, some of them are affiliates and I do receive a dividend from some of them and that helps me to continue making creative quality content here on YouTube. So thank you for supporting my channel in that way. Okay, now I'm going to dip my first sheet here and go in at an angle and then allow the slurry to kind of swish back and forth by moving the frame back and forth a bit. So you can see better. Ugh. Okay, swish back and forth and then allow it to settle. And then I'll lift straight up like so. Tap out some of the water. And then let's see how I can do this. When your hands are wet, thread and fabric, it's hard to handle. That's a good thickness. You don't want your, your paper to be so thick that you end up with a piece of cardboard at the end. I have about an eighth inch of slurry here built up and that once the water's pressed out will go up, go even thinner. So I'll have like a cardstock thickness of paper, not a cardboard. Okay, and now I'm going to take some of these threads and try to pull them apart and lay them onto my paper sheet here. like so that one just does not want to come apart there we go in the corner so i can use two hands oops that was messy okay and then set these in i'm kind of gently pressing them into the surface but i am going to pour some slurry over top of them so i'm not moving anything i'm just pressing them in place so they don't move around and this is very randomized. 
I'm just laying things in here. I think this might work. I'm gonna use this guy to dip into the slurry and I'm going to do this over the bin because the water is going to bleed through. Gently and slowly pour some of the slurry over the threads. And what I'm trying to do here is encase the threads into the paper by kind of covering them with some slurry. So some bits of the threads get covered by slurry, some not, so we can still see it, but this will help the threads to stay in the paper and not just fall off once it's dry. I've done this process with flower petals and it works pretty well. So let's see if it works with thread. If you need some ideas on how to use your handmade paper, check the description below. I have a list of ideas and some tutorials of how to use this stuff down there. Okay, and I'll give this a quick glance. Looks like I've got most threads encased somewhere along their length. So I think I'm gonna call that good. And now I'll tap out the excess water, give it a few minutes to drip. And then take the frame off, put my screen mesh piece, my fine mesh over top. And I'm gonna work from the top to the bottom of the sheet, pressing the water back into the bin. Now, lay this on my towel. I'll try to flatten my towel out a bit and press out more water, like so. Flip it over to see the front side. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And you can see some of these threads are covered by paper pulp bits. So they're going to be at least somewhat embedded. I may do a spray adhesive or not spray adhesive, um, spray fixative over top to try to kind of hold them in place more, but we'll see how this dries. I'm going to lay this piece out to dry on this Rubbermaid tub lid because my drying rack is full. Lift up the back gently so that it doesn't tear it and then allow that to air dry until it's totally dry. And let's dip another piece. I found another small handful of thread scraps so I'm going to do another dipped paper here. I was thinking I'd do the same thing as I did before, putting the thread in after the fact, but what the heck, I think I'm going to throw it in beforehand, just kind of sprinkling it onto the surface here. And then I'll dip. Let it settle and then lift up. Hmm. Well, that didn't work how I wanted it to. This thread got in there, but it's not really on the paper. So I'm going to reach in and grab my thread bits, put them on top anyway. <laughs> Okay, there you have it. You could dip with the thread in there, but it's not really going to end up where, God, it's so sticky. It's not going to end up in your paper necessarily. It could move aside, like I've got pieces stuck to the sides of the bin. I think in the future, I'll just put it onto the pa paper itself rather than into the bin which is the point of experimenting, finding out what works and what doesn't. So I'm going to press this out, let it allow it to sit on the drying rack to dry. And once all of these sheets, all oh, two of them, once my sheets are dry, I will show you the finished product. So when you're finished with your batch of slurry, don't dump it down your sink because it has liquid starch in it and bits of the paper and you don't want that to clog your drains. I have my bin that I normally dip paper in and a sieve, which apparently I used for dye powders recently because it is all kinds of colors. 
which is why my hands are all kinds of colors. I'm going to take this bin of slurry and transfer it through the sieve and allow the water to seep out and the pulp to go into the sieve. So I'll pour it in here like so. And you can see the concentration of the slurry here in the bottom. And now the paper slurry is in my sieve. Now I like to allow this to drain out the water and then allow the paper slurry here to dry so that it's solid and completely dry. And then I can use those bits and pieces for future paper projects. I'll just rehydrate them in water, blend them up to make a new paper slurry. And then this water ex excess that you have here, this still has little fragments of paper fibers and the liquid starch. I would suggest dumping this outside on gravel or away, away from garden beds, but somewhere that it will filter through rock, not directly into your drinking water source. That was fun. I have the paper from this project to show you. I let it dry for two days and then ironed it flat so that it was nice and smooth. And you can see the string embedded into the paper. Turned out really cool, has a kind of modern art E sort of texture or finish. This one, I didn't have a ton of strings to include, so I just kind of, oh, and that's a hair. Hmm. So I used a small amount on this piece. This is a lot more concentrated and I like this one a lot better because you can see it's purposeful and just shows up nicely. I do like the dark thread against the light background because it, it really pops and shows up and you can see the paper slurry nicely embedded the string into the paper so that it won't come off and I don't need to use any fixative to embed the string in there. So this project turned out really well. I'm really happy with how this worked. I wasn't wasn't sure what the outcome was going to be or how it was going to look, but I'm pleased with how that works. Leave a comment below or in the community tab if you try this project and uh, just let me know how it goes. I'd love to hear. Like this video because it spreads it to other makers. If you're new here, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified whenever I put out a new video. I've been posting kind of randomly, but the goal is on Thursdays and Saturdays. I have one more video in this series on incorporating wrapping paper into paper making. So be sure to check that out. That will be coming out in a couple of days. Thanks so much for watching and supporting my channel. Happy making. I'll see you next time. Bye.